So I watched Artyov Konstantinov's live coding video the other night and was impressed with the drum setup that he's got there. It's really simple but creates some really interesting beats. I'm going to recreate it here using groove objects instead of the synthesized drums that he uses. Um, first I'm going to create four buffers. And I create a little groove setup, which is just going to, each groove object is going to correspond to one of the buffers I've just created. Let's make this bigger. Um, and it's just going to have a simple method of triggering the sample file that's going to be loaded into that buffer object using a message zero, which is telling it to just play from the start. Okay, the method used in RTM's video is to create a metro object with um, an initial time of 100. We can change that later. The attribute active one means that it's just going to be running all the time. A random object with a setting of 100 is used to randomly generate numbers between 0 and 99. And then a greater than object is used, which just allows you to filter out a certain amount of those objects. So basically, if you put a setting of 20 in here, then roughly one in five of every beat would be would pass through. Um, but that would be kind of randomly arranged in time. So if I load a, a sound file into that buffer, I've got this file saved already in a folder with some basic drum samples. And so I'm just putting in the names of those drum samples as the second argument of the buffer objects, which automatically loads them into those buffers. And then by double clicking on the buffers, I can just check that the files have actually loaded. Okay, that wasn't working because this object sends out either a one if the random number it received is greater than the argument that it's received in its right inlet or a zero. And I'd connect with that directly to this zero message, which was meaning that both ones and zeros were triggering that. By using a cell one, I'll select for just the occasions when the uh, greater than um, logic is true. I've actually got this the wrong way around should be less than. And so, so that's one beat um, reconstructed in the way from the original video. Um, basically a, a lower number as an argument into this less than object means that the beats will sound less frequently and a higher number will sound them more frequently. I can recreate the setup four times for my four beats, or four sample files rather. We can see what that sounds like.
Okay, so that's approximately the setup that um, Artyom Konstantinov uses in his patch. He then combines that with a lot of other um, elements. What I'm going to do here is just um, make a few adjustments to this. Um, because we're using sample files that are being played by the Groove object, we can easily control the speed at which they're played back. And so I'm going to add um, a simple method of changing the um, the playback speed at a slightly random in a slightly random way. So I'm going to use a random 200, and then divide that by by 100. So just to show you what that does. Nope, it's not working because the 100 wasn't a floating point. So that's creating what are going to serve as playback speeds between 0 and 2. So in other words, between very slow and double speed. OK, and so we can kind of insert that into the signal path here. When when a one is received out of here, we might want to first change the speed of playback, and then secondly issue a a, a bang to to start the playback. That's messy, but I can encapsulate this now. Okay, let's try that out. Another thing that we might want to randomize are these parameters which determine the proportion of potential beats which are activated. Um, so these less than objects are serving as kind of filters to filter out some of the beats coming from this metro object. Um, so what, how might we want to do that? Well, we would not want to um, change those parameters every single beat necessarily. And so the method I'm going to use is just to use a random 10 and then just pick one of those numbers as a um, an arbitrary number which has a 1 in 10 chance of occurring. And every time that cell emits a bang, we can use it to generate a, a random number and send that random number up here. I'm using F1 to stand for frequency, um, which isn't necessarily particularly helpful in remembering what it means, but let's stick with it. And I'm just going to send multiples of that number to the other beats. See what we're sounding like now. Okay, just to give us some control over whether that randomized frequency of the beats is operative, we can put in a quick gate with a toggle. 
Another thing we might want to change is the speed of this metronome. Um, no need to have four of them. And so in a similar way, we could choose to periodically um, change the speed of the metronome. Um, create a little receive object up here, ready for it. Um, so again, um, we could do this randomly, but we could also do it um, kind of every now and then. So I'm going to use a counter. Um, a counter will go between 0 and 49 if it's set with an argument of 50. So I'm just going to add one so it goes between 1 and 50. And then once it gets to 50, I'm going to send a bang to a random with an argument of 2. So a random with an argument of 2 will output either naught, 1 or 2. And then for each of those options, I could just send another message, a different message with variance on the speed that that metro might want to run at. I'm going to use 100, 150, and 200. We can send that up to the receive object already created. One of these inputs for the counter um, sends out a um, resets the thing. So there's probably a way of doing this with the counter object itself, um, but this works. So I'm sending a bang to reset the counter. Um, and then a bang to um, to send out a, a random one of these three possible speeds to the metro object. That counter can be fed from the same metronome. And just to see if it's working, let's put an integer box here. And... Put one up here and see what's happening. Again, we might want to just put in a simple gate to be able to control this aspect of the randomized behavior. Okay, we can now just put those drums through a few effects um, and EQ um, options and then 
you've got a kind of self-generating drum beat which allows you to um, tinker away with some kind of melody over the top of that. around with that for ages. Um, thanks a lot to Artyom Konstantinov for his video. Um, hope you found that useful.